Okay, so we are recording. I'm going to mute you guys. So now if you want to talk, you just got to hit and hold your space bar and you can talk. If you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, so this week, uh, we start, I uh, have opened up in Blackboard already, um, week 10 and 11. I'm going to share my screen with you. So here we have um, drawing number six, which is a building section. Um, so we're going to start with, this is the color version. This is what we're looking at creating. Um, and we're, we're going to build into a more defined wall section. So we did that wall section uh, together at the beginning of class, which is going to be very similar to this. Uh, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take your elevation that you drew and we're going to cut the house in half so that we can see the inside of the house. Um, and this lets us see the different elevations between roofs, whether it's a, um, for example, an eight foot elevation or eight foot ceiling to a 10 foot ceiling. Um, or even if uh, you had a vaulted ceiling, this is where we would show that. Um, so let's say up in the uh, upstairs up here, we wanted vaulted ceilings or what, what we call a scissor truss um, that would kind of look like vaulted, but it would be kind of this uh, scissor that we have. We'd be able to see those different types of um, final formations inside the house, as well as our foundation, uh, where our foundations are going to go for depths. We'll be able to see our, uh, our elevation or plot plan. So we'll see how um, grade level works out into our house. Um, and so it's just, just an overall information so that as uh, we're looking at the house, we start seeing, okay, what kind of floor joists are we looking at? Now, typically, there's, we dimension these two to, so that we look at that. We can say, is that a 2 by 10, 2 by 12? Um, is that a structured floor truss? Um, is it an eye joist? What is it? Uh, typically, we're going to put that information um, in there as well. Um, I'm just clicking over here. So here is the... Here would be the non-color plotted version of what that drawing is going to look like. Um, and then we have in here, so I'm looking down here. So here are the, uh, the building section uh, directions. So that we're gonna start with our elevation and we'll work right through our elevation. So really you can take your elevation, save that elevation as another drawing and you don't have to redraw the outline of your house. It's already done. So you can blast away the, um, the siding and the windows because they're not going to be there because we don't show uh, a window. For example, as we're looking right here, there may be a window. If I was look at the uh, house in half, there might be a window in that family room. Uh, but we don't worry about that because that's not our focus. Our focus is on the structure and what we see at that point. Um, and then we will show the outside. For example, that roof that's overhanging over there or uh, the the porch that's overhanging, but we're not going to show windows and doors uh, and that sort of thing uh, in our elevation. Um, <clears throat> so in here, we're giving you all of the sizes for everything that you'll need to know. Um, is it goes right down to our wood sizes, which we already covered in our, our section, uh, but we're talking about our two by six, two by four. So you have all of the nominal information that you're going to need uh, to make those uh, parts happen. Um, your siding. Um, so what we're saying here, if I get to my siding here, if I explode it, uh, because if I hatched my roof or my siding, everywhere that I hatched, that's going to uh, be one. But if I explode it, it turns all those lines into individual lines, and then I can just erase what I want to erase. But then each one of these lines, for example, up here in the roof, each one of those lines is an entity. It's no longer a hatch pattern. Those are individual lines, which is okay. <clears throat> you're going to submit this. Don't worry about the, uh, the due date. Uh, we need to have these by Sunday. Um, these cross sections are fairly simple uh, to complete. We're also going to create a section, step-by-step -step section through the wall. Um, so we started down at the foundation. So we started out with our concrete footing. Remember that we have this little Z symbol. This is the broken out section. So we're saying, it doesn't matter 
the distance between here. There's no way we could fit that on a piece of paper because the building's too tall. But to make it fit, we do the broken out section saying that the distance or the, the material between these two does not change. And these can actually be closer. You can keep these about, um, you know, roughly a couple inches apart. And you would then type in, you will override the dimension. So in this case, the dimension's not going to work because you've kind of uh, compacted things together. So then you're going to override the dimension to tell me uh, that in this case it's nine foot six and a quarter. But if I was actually going to scale that or use a scale to measure it, it's going to be less than that. Uh, but I know that the material from the bottom of the wall to the top of the wall has not changed. So then we get to the top of the wall. So we can talk about our, our sill plate which and sill sealer, which we talked about, you know, our, um, our rim joist along with our insulation. They're calling out for a two by eight instead of a two by six. Bigger is not, and there's nothing wrong with going bigger. Uh, we typically go two by four because it's too short, but a two by six or a two by eight gives us more room, so that's fine. Again, this is all the same information as what we put in our first cross section. Um, and then as we move up again, we do another broken out section. So what we're doing is we are shortening that wall so that we can fit more information down and we are going to override the dimension so we know how far it is from top plate to top plate. So that's the same thing as center to center. And then as we go up, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We know that that height is actually going to be taller, but we're going to, again, shrink it down so it all fits on one section. So we have one whole section of the house. Um, and it is presumed when we show this section that all sections of the, uh, the house are going to be the same. Uh, and while I say that, I'm saying that the foundation, all of the foundation up to the first floor will have the same uh, information within the wall. The first floor will have all of the same uh, structural members. Moving up into our second floor, they're all going to be the same. So we get to the third floor. So if something's going to change, it should change throughout the whole building. But I only need to show it once so that the builder knows what it is that they're expected to do. Typically, there is no change. Uh, we don't typically do this wall over here as a two by six, and the wall on 10 feet away as a two by four. Um, we will make interior walls two by four, uh, but typically whatever the exterior walls, all of them will be exactly the same. Everybody good with that? I'm hoping so. No one replied yes or no, or? Uh, when, when is that when is due? Due? Uh, this should be due on Sunday, uh, the 9th. Remember, I'm not real focused on deadlines at this point. I really just want you guys to get through the work and get that completed. Um, you know, as long as it's in by the end of, you know, before a semester exams, I really don't care. The issue is we have more work to do. Okay, so we have, you know, this week we have the elevation, uh, the cross section of the house and the cross section of the wall. Next week we have, um, what is next week? Let me go back to, so we have week 10 and 11, then in week 12, week 12, we're looking at, I know you guys can't see my screen, I'm just click. Um, and then week 12, we do an interior elevation. And when we do an interior elevation, now we are gonna show windows and doors because now we're trying to look at a wall like we did when we first started the class and we did that elevation with um, the little house with the, the kitchen um, and showing the window. So that'll be our interior wall elevation. That So that'll be week 12. And then week 13, my computer's going a little bit slow. I think someone else is on the internet with me. And then week 13, we'll go to the plot plan. And the plot plan or the site plan, that's going to be what the house looks like 10,000 feet in the air so we can see what the house looks like and see how that lays out with the, the ground around it for elevation changes. And then in week 14 and 15, our final uh, two weeks, you're going to do a mini house. Um, and your mini house is going to be, you know, kind of like a, um, I don't know if you've seen the TV shows, but like a trailer. 
but it's going to be a mini a miniature house that can uh, go down the road. So it's not going to be a trailer, but a mini house, if everybody understands what I'm talking about. And then we'll give you those that information. So you're going to have to create all of the drawings that were required for your mini house. And your mini house isn't very big. I think it's the same size as a, a semi-trailer or a, a, a container, one of those uh, metal shipping containers uh, sizes. So you're going to have to do all of the drawings, all the complete set of what you have here. The nice thing is it's a box, you know, and, and you're not going to have to do a bunch of extra work. It's just going to be laying that out so that everything fits the way you need it to. So that's kind of the way that we're going to pro progress uh, now to the end of the semester. Um, I do want to reiterate that remember um, that, you know, your goal here is not to be a full-fledged architect or an AutoCAD guru. Our goal of AR119 is to get you versed in AutoCAD so that you feel comfortable using AutoCAD so that we are covering some architectural concepts so that when you move up into whatever your next architectural class is, that now you are really starting to um, understand the, the hows and the whys and to start to make those decisions of what you're gonna do as opposed to just copying what someone else says. Um, so Gwen asked me, um, are we doing a cross section of four, all four elevations? No. Um, I mean, when I say no, <laughs> Meredith, did you just join us? Yes, sorry. That's okay. Uh, so. Uh, when we, I'll go back to sharing my screen here so I can show you what we're talking about here. Um, so Gwen, you asked about the elevation. So this is our full elevation. So this is what we're going to show of the whole house, the so full house cross section. So it's like taking the house and cut it in half. And then for our full elevation, we are elevating, we are doing the cross section from the basement to the first floor, first floor to the second floor, second floor to the basement. So we're not doing each elevation. We're not doing one for the north, south, east, and west. We're only doing one. Does that make more sense? Gwen says SAS. So Meredith, if you if you just missed what we started, I have all of this recorded so we can play it back so I won't have to rehash all of this and I'll post this up on Blackboard. So if you missed the first part of what we're talking about. Um, so moving through or uh, moving forward, again, remember it's about learning AutoCAD, about being proficient with the drawing tools. You're using the same tools over and over and over again. That's really what we want you to do. Um, and then the understanding of what is architecture, what is the makeup of a house, uh, so that when you do get to your design juices and you get to decide what a, your designs are going to look like, you'll understand what you're drawing and why. So that's the main purpose of what we're doing with AR uh, 119. Um, I don't know what's going on with summer classes for architecture. I don't know that there are any offerings going on. Uh, but we are asking everyone to, uh, if you're looking at scheduling, start scheduling and get that stuff going. Even though it seems like the world's at an end, um, it's not. And we're still moving forward. I know that I have, um, I think in my EG110, which is the mechanical version of AR118, I have uh, 10 people already signed up for the early summer, as well as my uh, SolidWorks class. I have another seven people signed up for that. So we encourage you to, to register. Um, with the expectation that early summer is probably going to be online. Uh, the difference is everybody's prepared for it. Um, so I know that I'm teaching all online, which changes the, the, the way that we're going to deliver um, and, and what I have prepared and, and timing and space, uh, timing and uh, pre preparation for me and for you. Um, so just to keep that uh, in mind as we move forward. So that is all that I have for you for this week. So this week we have the full cross section of the house and we have the elevations and those are under week 13. Oops, oh, it's not week 13. It's a week 10 and 11, I do believe. I'm going back to, talk, to check right now. Yep, so under what you'll see is week 10 and 11. Um, and we are actually going into week 11. We are, we're behind. We're one week behind, um, so we're trying to speed this up a little bit. Um, and 
the reason I want to speed it up now is because I want to give you more time at the end for your design for your house. I don't want to try and pack all of that into uh, the very end. Um, again, in reminder that I'm not so hard on deadlines. I have when it's due, um, when you get it done, I'll grade it. Okay, I just want you to keep working as best you can um, and try not to keep pushing things off because at some point the semester will come to an end. Um, so just work as, as diligently as you can and, and try to finish um, these things up. But there are examples for each one of the drawings of what your drawing should look like. Um, so really this is a copycat uh, type of drawing. So we're just going through those, that mode of draw, 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 use AutoCAD, understand what we're looking at. All right. So moving forward, are there any questions, things that you need to know from me? Perfect time to use the yes, no check button in your manage participation. Yes, no. Dave says he's good, Nicole's good. While I say that, um, one of the easiest things for me to do um, is to zoom in to each one of you um, because you can share your screen with me just like I showed you my screen. Each one of you has the ability at the bottom of your screen to share your screen, uh, that you could share your screen. So if you have something going on and you're like, you know what, I'd like Mr. Ward to take a look at this or I have a question, um, send me an email and ask me, hey, are you available? And uh, I can quick do a quick Zoom meeting between the two of us. We can look at your um, your drawing, answer any questions. It's just faster, it's easier. Um, and, you know, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm just kind of stuck at home like you guys. Uh, the one thing that, that, that we are doing or that my wife has requested, uh, because I'm on my computer now from seven in the morning until all hours of the night, uh, is that at eight o'clock PM, I'm, I'm shutting off my computer. Not really. I'm just not answering emails and doing those things. So eight o'clock every night we do our family night of games, card games, movies, whatever we're doing for the night. But um, so eight o'clock at night, we've kind of set that aside as our family time uh, when no technology is allowed and uh, we're just a family. So uh, keep that in mind. But any other time, send me a message. I'll zoom in uh, and we could take a look and, and uh, get you the answers that you uh, need or uh, and hopefully keep things move along at a pretty good pace. So if you guys don't have any other questions, that's all the information I have for you right now. Um, let's just keep moving forward. Stay healthy, stay safe, um, and we'll see you guys next week, Monday. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Take care. Bye.